This is IBM Museum. So I've got the bench cleared a little bit away and I've got the IBM PS2 model 76 and this is the version that's based on the Bermuda planer just like the model 77 that we've been looking over and that planer that I sent to Curious Mark hopefully to get his model 77 up and running so they can go a little bit further with it and it's on route as we speak hopefully they'll be receiving that um, the post office told me Friday uh, but I did provide the tracking number to Mark. Maybe it'll get there tomorrow. Maybe it'll be Friday. Um, now, I haven't powered this unit up. I did go through and just did a little bit of preliminary inspection inside. Um, I did move one of the SIMs to what I think is the more correct position. Uh, for the four SIM sockets, it only had um, it has one SIM that looks like a four megabyte uh, that is in... Uh, was in the MEM2 connection, and it very well may work that way, but I put it over in the MEM1. And normally your first SIMs in the system, of course, go in the least accessible, or they go through and they stack them, they interleave to where um, the one that's under the other one for the angle setup that the Bermuda planer has, uh, that lower SIM will always be the uh, a lower numbered or uh, lower in the in the memory space or that should be filled first. Um, I'm wanting to demonstrate the uh, just a quick troubleshooting step beyond going through and I will go through and and I'll probably have to reverse this and I'd like to reverse the case. Um, try not to bump the camcorder as well. I'm kind of limited on the space behind. And these are heavy little cases. I can just barely get that out and bump the webcam a little bit. Let's see if that positioning for now will be, will be good for us. And um, I do intend um, and I can revert back to this, but I've, um, let's go through and let's look at the, the camcorder side too. And this is the Mall 76, just like the, the model, um, 56 that we've looked at, both the 8556 and 9556 is what they call the space saver format. Three by three, three slots, three bays, and... At least in this instance, um, you know, for the for the Bermuda planer at least, it goes through and it does populate one of the slots with the video board. It does not have integrated video from the planer, so you do lose a slot for that video. And I think these machines are probably a level that they're able to operate what's called headless, where they're not displaying their um, remotely. Um, there's ways to remotely access, you know, them running. Um, but let's just go with, you know, we've got the VGA or the uh, XGA2 display adapter in there. Um, it does have the SIM slots underneath here. As I say, that, that MEM1 slot I've got popped way back there. I went through and I checked for a, a, a basic CPU. And this is actually the, the third, effectively the third bay. It's, you've got bay one for the diskette drive, a bay underneath for something like a CD-ROM, and then this internal bay for the hard drive, and it's got this little carrier. And of course, things are a little tight in here, um, but I do have, you know, it's got a, a CPU in the socket. Now, this is a 486SX um, that's in... The socket here, or I mean, excuse me, is a PL uh, a qu plastic quad flat pack uh, on the planer. And so it could operate with this, this CPU. And normally these are, these are 33 megahertz, um, but it's got this uh, um, DX2 CPU that's in there as well. Let me go through 
get this back in the position that it was. I wanted to have it out in front in a way too of what we're gonna connect up for the basic troubleshooting process. Let me get my internal webcam out of the way too. And um, of course that tower or that Model 77 on, in the stand just off to the right there and that being the five by five desktop format that we covered. Um, let me get the, since we've looked and made sure that we have a um, CPU in there and this big long SCSI cable and I don't know if that's stock on these because it should just have just a few drops on it. You might need it for this for the hard drive and that uh, like a SCSI CD-ROM in there. So two drops in addition to the planer. And that, that SCSI is on the system planer in the Bermuda side. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get flipped around and let's even revert back to get the back of it uh, visible. And we've got the you know, the XGA2 that I already point out in the slot. And then down on the planer, the mouse and keyboard ports, the parallel port, and that'll be the thing that we'll want to look at here in just a moment. And then two DB9 serial ports. And then furthest on the left in this view is the, um, the particular proprietary uh, SCSI connection that, that IBM had. And this is the narrow SCSI, uh, but they've got kind of a mini Centronics uh, connector for that. 50 pins ultimately, um, for, or, 50, uh, or 60. I'd have to go through and I think there, there's some um, extra pins in there beyond the normal narrow format. Um, but an even 60, I believe, for that Centronics connector. Um, so the aspect that we're gonna look at is now normally when you did troubleshooting on the starting on the PC, IBM designed a port. Um, for the PC and XT that it basically wrote codes to the port as the system powered on. And you could see what, if it the system stopped at one port, uh, I mean, excuse me, at one uh, display, you could see what that last uh, reading was. And these, these are called postcode readers. And um, this is even one that I went through and I, I uh, went through and wire wrapped um, years and years ago to kind of make my own. It's a very simple um, thing. I don't have, I, I think these are the only chips and the two display segments that it needs. These other chips, I think I was going through and adding on something else at some point or putting those in place. I don't know if I've, yeah, I went through and I wired them in kind of in some way with the blue wire wrap, but most of the stuff um, that's earlier is that uh, those black wire wrap wires. So just a real basic uh, postcode reader that I had for the PC XT. Now when IBM got to the, the PS2s, I mean they had to wear, this is a um, interposer that goes through and adapts from the micro channel slot and you would use the old XT bus postcode reader, their version, to put this on a microchannel system. And um, it does have um, one chip on there. It's probably for a little bit of the IO decoding of um, the differences of microchannel um, to, to get it to that 
uh, format for the uh, 8-bit uh, XT bus format. But it's even easier than that because IBM also made it so the codes went to uh, the parallel port. And so this um, little adapter, and these are available even until with shipping, you know, in the United States, of course, a lot of time. I don't know in the foreign markets, but these are, um, you can get these, you can receive them because the uh, cost with the shipping and everything is typically less than $10 USD. And I'll put a link, I'm not affiliated with any eBay seller, but it seems like, and I've done a review of this device before on a 55SX. Uh, I'll include a link from the very start because I got prompted uh, that I needed to um, to give a link. And so I provided one in the comment. And I'll just kind of dig that out. I think they've still got it available on the listing that I saw. I mean, they sell many, many, many of these things. And it's nice in the modern context that you don't have any competition for these um since uh, a lot of the systems, the modern systems now, they don't even have a parallel port on them. And what I've done here is you can get the the USB for um, power adapter, and normally they include a little um, A to A, what they call a like a suicide cable, or effectively it, it's got the same thing at both ends. And this is just for power. Um, there's not any. Uh, thought of a host and a device in this case uh, but you get you know the um, it's got a little short lead and you get one of those um, USB power I mean if you had a system with USB that also had the parallel port you could go through and plug this into the USB port for power on the system what I've done is I've gone through in these old uh, Microsoft adapters and of course I go in the mouse port and this just provides power over this cable too. It doesn't go through and do any of the other signals. Um, now, of course, if you go through and load um, something like when the system goes through and finally boots up and loads something like Windows, um, you know, you won't have a mouse there for that uh, for that time. But this is a real easy location a lot of time to go through and just um, plug that into the the mouse port if I can on this model. Um, there's you know, some pretty tight tolerances there in the back, but it, that just barely nestles in there. And as I say, every PS2 has a parallel port, so that's just something to kind of take uh, advantage of and pick up one of these adapters. It's a useful thing to have around just for the basic go no go aspect of, of seeing that the system powers up and the CPU you know if you got digits turning over that everything's uh, um, good for at least the CPU starting up the sequence and of course you may run into errors I've got this extension cable for the keyboard side and I'll probably even keep this on the, the camcorder just for the aspect of, um, I'm not really necessarily interested in what's coming up on the screen here. We can throw it over to that screen if we need to. But I'm gonna go through and just keep the system. And I did, apparently had the power button uh, down because it goes through, it went through and immediately powered up. And so you can kind of see the codes. And I wanted to go through and kind of zoom in <laughs> at um, to show that sequence when I got to the point where I, I booted it. And maybe we can even kill the ring light. We have to. And even for the off center um, that we have here, kind of hard to see. Okay, so we got a beep beep. And so on the left, and it's not as visible, 
for you guys, but that's a 6F on the left and a 70 on the right. And that 6F is supposed to be the so-called previous code. The 70 on the right is the current code. That's where it's halted. And let's just take a peek to flip that over. And I haven't even used those. There, there's buttons on there to go through in advance. Um, through, oh, I don't have the, I don't have the display even connected. <laughs> and that's fine. We would see with the XGA2, it's going to tell us invalid format at the start. Okay. So yeah, if it's going to go with that invalid format, let me see if we can, um, what I'll do is I'll go back to my camcorder. I will power it down, power the system down. And let's go through and with the uh, display connected this time, so it could go through and detect <laughs> uh, things. Let's go through and power it up again. And you see the dash dash and then zero zero goes through to zero F zero one. Okay, quickly flips through going uh, four zero on the right. Let's look over. And it does all this, you know, these codes can come up before it necessarily even has a display. So there we have the 161 error ultimately expressed just with more digits leading and following. And these should be, yeah, it's four megabyte of RAM, uh, 301 for one of the errors and uh, the 161 error again with the two lean zeros, 163 error with the leading digits and it's dropped into the to the IML um, partition. So I can bring up, in fact, I'm gonna bring myself the regular webcam up and I can probably flip between this and the camcorder just to show the battery is ultimately on the riser down here and I know on this view it's not visible um, but I am prepared to why I do have other batteries available and so I can probably go through and change that out okay I want to keep my word that this is going to be a short video and I wanted to be to the point of the um, the parallel postcode reader and these things are sometimes a little bit of a bear to get out let's get through get me my screwdriver Old battery. Hopefully these blister packs are go through and these are both energizer and I'm not looking at date codes or anything else, but they should have a pretty good shelf life for for all that. And smell that 
that's coming from the the battery packaging not the system in this case Boy, I hate these blister packs they sure go through and they're they're probably making sure that kids don't um, open these up and like a coin to uh, swallow them because that is um, really bad news. In fact, they have a little icon on there of the uh, baby going through. And of course, you have to peel that little label. Let's go through, let's stick. We're going to see if this holds the configuration. I've heard some issues about otherwise about the um, system. Going through and okay, so do an inner. Or did we wait too long? Maybe swapping the battery out live. Just did it under. And you could see. see it does that in valid format for not really necessarily recognizing the um, the display initially. And we can see really good with that display, 85 and 86, 24, 61, 62. And again, it should get up to that 70 in that right-hand display, I believe, before it goes through and... Uh, I believe that's probably a count of memory. Get the beep. Okay. So as it says there, the for the seventy. I wonder if that. Um, that postcode reader and this is getting long for all that the 301, I believe, was, um, I believe that's a mouse error. Oh, that's why my keyboard doesn't work, because I got the wrong, I had the wrong uh, thing plugged in. I had the mouse actually plugged in. David stumbling through things just makes the whole video longer. About 25 minutes now. Okay, we only got the 161 and 162 now. Oh, 301 was, uh, it's a keyboard error. Not a mouse error. And kind of associated in a way. Okay. Okay. Let's 
gonna tell us about the battery, set the date and time, and we are up to 17th, 18th, me losing track of days, 18, zero, two, one, and, wow, it's getting late. Okay, enter, time and date have been updated, I'm at configuration is being run. SCSI device is being configured. Automatic configuration is complete. Okay. And even though it's off the screen, I'm going to go through and I'm going to plug in the mouse just in the thought that whether we have a graphical user interface uh, that pops up. I don't know if I've got, I don't think I've got anything like Windows 3.1 or anything like that. Still with the 161s. And this riser, I mean, I can go through and in other troubleshooting, I could go through and pull the riser out, reseat it, making sure I have good contact. I'm relatively sure that that battery is good. I've just brought out. But apparently this thing, again, with the battery replaced. Okay. Okay, was just installed. And we're back to the time and date. So we're about to the, the limit for the, the troubleshooting process. I'll go through and just to not make the video any longer, I'll go through and troubleshoot that out otherwise. Uh, we may have some other error that's coming up and, and happening. We've been hearing of uh, Bermuda planners that go through and do things like this. Um, I did want to demonstrate the postcode reader working. I've, of course, moved it off out of the way. And even for, you know, this is even um, the XT bus or ISA buses are labeling it. And they're labeling it to the rear just to avoid confusion, getting in the, the wrong way. But that's for the 8-bit XT or ISA bus. And then on this side is the, um, the PCI bus. And they also should have a marking for um, what, well, and it's, it's got a keyway and got that separate thing. So this back this way is to the rear of the, of the system. And this has got even power lights and um, particular signals if I can get that to focus, not get too much reflection off of it. And then it even has a remote for having something outside the case of the same digit display there for one of those adapters. So that's handy for those Type of computers like a PCI computer is what I'd use that for. But that's what I'm saying is these ad adapters for the cost and everything else is good to order something, get on hand even before you need it because it can be very, very handy. Um, you know, if you want to do something fancy like picking up uh, <laughs> uh, one of those mouse adapters you have to do on the side because I think it only includes that type A to type A uh, cable. Doesn't even include a uh, USB uh, power supply. Although those are relatively easy to come by as well, of course. That goes right in the parallel port. So, 
If you thought that this content was informative, please click on that like button. Please uh, subscribe my channel if you're not already. I'm just shy of like a 486 uh, subscribers. I was thinking, well, this would be like the 46 special or something like that, but it's not. Um, you know, whether that comes over this weekend, maybe for the live stream or not. Um, and if I don't do it, it uh, I, I previously said that I was going to do it at 10 in the morning. Um, and um, I may adjust that a little bit. I may go to like maybe uh, four hours later to go to maybe 2 p.m. local time. Or I may do even a second show. In any regard, I'll be on, I can come on in the morning if I'm not going to do the uh, view, I'm not going to do the stream and just basically fill people in by streaming content. Uh, since, and once again, since I'm not able to do uh, YouTube analysis being below 1,000 subscribers. But getting close to 500, so I'm halfway there and very satisfied for that. So that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.